My name is Joy Makepeace and I'm a Gamilaroi Marawari woman. I was placed with um, one family for five months and that family uh, lived close to where my biological mum was and they got back in touch with the department and told them that they didn't want to have me in their care so I was put back in as a ward of the state and that's when the Make Peace family um, wanted to take me and uh, foster me. And up until that point, Mum had been saying, no, I'm not signing any adoption papers. And that was when all the adoptions for a lot of uh, my siblings uh, went through after Mum passed. I remember distinctly, I was in the bathtub one time and I said, Mum, why is my skin brown and yours is white? And she would always dismiss it and just say, oh, don't worry about it, Joy, you know, we love you. And so I never felt any different to uh, the family and it wasn't until I started to get exposed to other Aboriginal community people and situations that I realised I am not the same. And even though I can walk in two worlds, uh, it's, it's not, I'm not. I'm too black to be white and too white to be black and that's been the dilemma of my life. I came down from Queensland with mum here to Adelaide and I went to Elizabeth High School and uh, that was the first time that I'd really uh, even had contact connection with other Aboriginal um, students or people and so I was uh, really felt like a fish out of water because I'd just not had contact and connection with my family or community. My undergraduate was in um, a Bachelor of Applied Science in Conservation and Park Management so I loved the environment and so obviously Australia is enriched with Aboriginal culture so I did learn a lot theoretically through uni and um, also got to go to a lot of places that had strong um, Aboriginal history, like the Flinders Ranges and um, down at the Camp Coorong. And so I did learn a lot about culture through academically. I absolutely lost my entire sense of identity. So. I'm 50 years old now and it has taken me this long of working through those past losses and trauma um, about not having known anything to do with language or culture or tradition or protocols. Um, I don't even, I do know now um, some of my cousins and who my aunties and uncles have been, but it's taken years. So we were all coming from different directions, but um, we had our workers with us, but I remember I was at the park, sitting on the park bench, and I don't know, it felt like a, a date or something, and the nerves were so raw, and, and I just looked over my shoulder, and I'm in the emotion. Um, me and my sister just connected and we hugged and um, she was wearing something very similar like the it was strange it was the first time that I felt like I could see something of myself in someone else and I just remember looking down the line and just thinking if if um, this is all there is to life then you know stick a fork in me I'm done it was so perfect to um, 
realise that I have my uh, three sisters with me. When you see someone that's sitting in a park or doing something that is a stereotypical view of what an Aboriginal person has been labelled as by society that is very ill-informed and uneducated, just think instead of uh, what's wrong with that person, just ask yourself what's happened to that person and really think about there, there is a story, we've all got stories and Australia does have a very dark black history and nearly every Aboriginal family has been touched by stolen generation.